And welcome everybody to this, the final episode in our current series of Meet the Makers. Uh, today we share thrills and spills from the cutting edge of the blank page with a dynamic screenwriting duo who have an extraordinary and inspiring story of how they got where they are today. Daniel Fajimison Duncan and Marlon Smith grew up together in South London and now work together as a highly successful screenwriting partnership for film and television. Their debut was the critically acclaimed Channel 4 drama series Run, and they went on to pen Sky Atlantic's BAFTA-nominated hit drama Save Me, starring Lenny James, who many will recognise from The Walking Dead. So we're going to explore all things screenwritery and work out how an idea can sometimes, if we're lucky, end up as screen reality. I'm really, really pleased and delighted to welcome to this session Daniel and Marlon. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Marlon. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and share some of your experience with uh, many of our young and aspiring listeners out there. Um, so let's start off by talking a little bit about lockdown. So obviously the industry is in, no one could do anything. Is it different for writers? I, I think for, not, not for Marlon and I, maybe uh, for, for others, um, but we usually work from home. Uh, so for us, it was like more of the same. The only thing is we, you know, sometimes we head to a coffee shop or you know like a bar sometimes to just to get out the house uh so we missed that but to be honest it's um it's just been like the same but on steroids <laughs> <laughs> yeah working from, working from home is pretty much a, the standard thing the only difference i guess was uh having company because uh my my wife and my son were also <laughs> here on lockdown and uh so i didn't get much done um <laughs> but uh yeah it's kind of just like dan was saying it's kind of normal for us so you live as writers, you live in a state of sort of semi-permanent lockdown, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How oh, you put it like that, yeah. <laughs> or, or the same, you know. Very true. Uh, and so maybe, um, Daniel, can you just tell us a little bit, what are you guys working on? We, we like to start these sessions sort of with now, and then what we'll do is we'll track back in time, as it were. So what are you guys working on right now? Um, well, at the moment, we are uh, working on the, the two projects that um, I think um, that were in the, um, uh, the initial email that went out. So uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a, a modern day adaptation of that with Liza Marshall, uh, who um, recently did the TV show Temple, which was on Sky One. Um, and uh, we are also uh, currently doing a, uh, a film with working title that hopefully will be uh, uh, announced very soon. And a Netflix uh, TV show, uh, an episode um, for uh, another uh, really good writer called Gregory Burke, who did the film 71. Um, uh, he, he has a, a TV show set up at Netflix with um, the makers uh, behind Gangs of London. Uh, and so we're doing an episode uh, for, for him as well. And then um, uh, there's quite a few things. And, and I guess lastly, uh, probably, Best to mention that we're also working on a Channel 4 project, which is all our own. Um, it's like a one-off miniseries uh, about a, a Cherry Gross, who uh, was unfortunately a victim of police brutality. And um, the effects of what happened to her led to the 1985 Brixton riot. And, and it's a family drama about um, how they uh, cope with that and fought for justice all the way up until about 2014, actually. So, yeah, oh, just a, a few things there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I mean, that is a lot. I mean, and so as a screen, because obviously you guys, I, lo I think it's amazing uh, to be a partnership. And, and obviously we'll talk a little bit more about that. But maybe, Marlon, you can just tell us, I mean, obviously Daniel's telling us a lot of projects that you're working on at the same time. So how yeah. does that dynamic work just day to day practically? I mean, are you collaborating on every single line of every single script or is one person doing one and the other's another? Are you like a, a mini corporation? Like, <laughs> tell, us, tell us how it works. It's kind of like we, we are working together. I guess it's kind of feeds into a bit about process as well. But we are when you've got like numerous projects like that basically one will one will concentrate on one and whilst the other is dealing with another and we kind of we like to 
rewrite each other in a way, I guess, I guess it is. Um, we always say it's kind of like a, a, a diamond shape. So when we're beginning to work on a project, we'll work very closely together and break the story and, you know, get, get it into a shape that we want, that we want it to be, you know, where we want to go, always try and have an ending if we can. Um, and then one of us will go away and write, and then we'll come back together and basically edit each other's work and then we'll switch over. Um, so you can be working on three or four things at, at one time. Um, and I guess the dynamic, the, the reason why we work well as a duo is usually the ideas that we come back with once we're editing are better than, than what's down on the page. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. You, you, we're, we're able to keep the plate spinning by constantly moving around. It's like a merry-go-around. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I can imagine that when when working in a part in a duo like that, when it's working well, I mean that's great, right? Because you've got another brain to look at what you've written, and you know, a writer's life. I know from my own experience, you you know, you write something and you get you have that moment, don't you, where you sort of you think, is that any good? I, I just don't know. And then you you often have to wake up the next morning, and then you, it's difficult to trust yourself. And you and so a lot of writers end up with a very trusted another set of eyes be that their agents or someone who passed it but you've sort of got that i suppose inbuilt into the partnership is that kind of part of it yeah for sure i mean i think yeah and that's one of the, the the beauties i guess of having that that person there because like what you, you're saying sometimes as a writer you can mull over an idea for so long but with us i can have an idea and give him a call and say what do you think of this and he, he'll usually say, no, it's not very good. Um, <laughs> That's <laughs> no, not true. <laughs> no, 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 he'll usually, you know, it's an it's a answer straight away so you can move on. You know, you can test it out, see what it is. But it's kind of like you get an instant kind of feedback, um, which is very helpful. Um, yeah, it's great. Well, well, we'll talk more about so process and partnership a bit later. But I think that this idea of the partnership, it, you guys have such an amazing story that let's let's investigate sort of how you ended up sort of starting to work together. And it is inspiring, I think, because you started so young together and you've been working together for so long. Um, so let's just sort of backtrack um, a little bit, and we're going to talk. We'll start up talking about Run, which I think was the your first. I'm right, it's your first sort of major thing. Before maybe though we see the uh, or hear the story of how this run run happened, um, let's take a look if we can at the trailer for Run. So some people may may not have seen it, but it was on Channel Four and it, it got a, a fantastic amount of great press at the time and is a, it was a brilliant show. So let's take a look if we can, and then we'll hear the story of how Run came about. What's do it? Trains. Trains! It was an accident. This is your fault! She's my daughter, man. Always in the back of my head. Who do you support? Barcelona. <laughs> Screened over four nights, four stories that run into one another. No! I don't care who you are. Just tell me where she's going. Where are you going to go? I don't know. Run. New drama. Starts 15th of July on 4. Amazing. So... That's where it all ended up, but let's now take and let's kind of rewind the tape um, by uh, by quite a lot of years. So, how many years prior to that going out did you guys first meet? Wow. Uh, 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 it's in like meeting each other for the first time. Yeah, yeah. we were like fourteen years old. I, I would say, yeah, uh, about then. So. I'm not good with math, but a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, can you talk us through, so how did you guys first meet and, uh, and, and what were you up to in those super early days? Uh, so um, uh, we kind of grew up uh, in the same area. We went to, um, uh, we, we first met at a, uh, a youth project that was, was run by the police uh, during the summer holidays. 
Um, and then uh, a few years later, we re you know, bumped into each other uh, at a college, a sixth form college, uh, and um, became proper friends there. And also uh, realized that we were the only ones, uh, along with uh, our friend Jonathan Pearson, who we uh, uh, who directed and co-created uh, Run with. Um, uh, we were, were the th us three were the only ones who were really uh, interested in doing f uh, films uh, for an actual career. Everyone there obviously loved films, and we had film geeks there. But we were the only ones who were putting pen to paper, and um, we also uh, made our first short together, which was on an old Hi8 camcorder. Uh, and yeah, we 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 were just like I guess <laughs> uh, lucky enough to find each other, and um, and it kind of began uh, that way. Wow, that's amazing! And so let's talk a bit about that. So who had the camcorder at that time? Marlon. Yeah, I had uh, I I had a, I'd bought a, uh, a one of those old Hi8 cameras. Really, I mean, at the time it was really top quality, um, <laughs> but but you know when you look back on it now, you probably wouldn't be able to get a picture out of it. Um, but I was I, I bought one of those and was desperate to to start making films to start doing something, and then I met uh, I reconvened with Dan. You know, we knew each other from the area, and then uh, him and Jonathan they were actually making a film when I first met them, they were actually in the middle of making a film. And it actually, it blew my mind. I was like, I can't believe it. I've met, I've actually met two people who are actually doing something. Cause around where I lived, if you said you wanted to make movies or, or get into the industry, it was laughable. Or it was just like, that is a dream. That's never going to happen. You kind of got to get over yourself type stuff. Um, and so, you know, I said to them, I've got a camcorder, you know, let's make something. And, we made a really bad kind of eight minute movie after they'd made their, their first film. And how um, old were you guys then, Marlon? Um, we were 17. 17, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, so it's, when it's, they were making movies, I mean, some people might think that that meant there was a big crew and that they were somehow yeah. doing, like, what were the movies? <laughs> Can you just give us a sort of, sort of a, a real, like, view of what it was like in those early days? What were you doing when you were making those movies? Um, we were basically, it was like run and gun, you know, it was, you know, go and stand over there with the camera and, and use all available kind of light and, you know, shoot in the pitch black, not really knowing whether you were going to be able to see what it was that you were filming. Um, you know, it was, it was as a, it was as on, on hands, hands on deck, everyone, everyone chipping in as well. You know, even at that young age, everyone was chipping in. Anyone that you wanted, who you asked to be involved, were happy to be involved. I mean, borrowing cars and using ketchup as blood and, and things like that, you know. Anything that you can think of is what we were, is what we were doing to get the film over the line, you know. We, we often say that actually the nice thing for, for young people who are, who are starting to do this, you need to rope in a lot of favours in those very early days when you're doing stuff. But actually the good thing, if you say you're making a movie, right, people tend to want to help. You know, because yeah. it's a cool thing. So, Daniel, is that how what you found when you were seventeen? Is that what you were doing? So, saying I'll make a movie and see what you could get. Yeah, no, that they, uh, everyone was really interested, and a lot of the time they wanted to just be in it. You know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> can we be in it? Like, uh, let me play a role. But, um, but yeah, they uh, times we were using like friends' cars because at seventeen, um, it was when a lot of us were just starting to, to drive, you know, get, got, got their license and were driving. And so it was practical help like that. Um, and also, can we use uh, your garden? Um, can, you know, stuff like that. Uh, or or uh, can you get your, your parents to, um, you know, allow us uh, to film in their attic or their garage or, uh, it was it was it was very 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 practical um, and also we 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 found that um even if people couldn't help they were really interested in wanting to say it afterwards like so um mm. it, it garnered a lot of interest just in our uh, immediate kind of social circle yeah cool and so you guys basically were the only kids who were interested in this stuff in your community type thing and so that is that one of the things that drew you together i suppose in those in those early days yeah i think yeah. so i think I mean, I mean like daniel was saying people did love film you know we had a we you know everyone loved watching films going to the cinema um but to do but doing something about it i think i think more because everyone just thought it was kind of like a pipe dream is that a, a 
you know, something that we'd never come in from where we were coming from. There's not even no point in doing that. How would you even get down? How would you even go down that avenue? How would you even do that? Um, and we were the only ones really who were, you know, writing in our spare time and who, you know, actually thought, you know, we can do this. We don't, we don't need to, to wait for anyone to kind of do it for us. The only way we're going to, you know, draw any attention or get anyone to watch what we've made is to, is to, is to make it. Yeah, um, it and I think that, I think that's that kind of solidified our bond even at, at, at that young age. And I think that is so inspiring because, listen, that is what every young person thinks. They all think somewhere inside them, every young person thinks that it's a pipe dream of some sort, right? Because no one knows. And so to hear a story of how you guys, you know, actually ended up where you ended up, where you started thinking it was a pipe dream, absolutely inspiring. So let's, let's Craig, say that you were doing that at school and you were at kind of college and you'd met on, on this course. Then you were doing sort of stuff. And then I think you mentioned to me that there was a period where you kind of almost walked away from it and then you came back to it later. Maybe, uh, Daniel, can you talk us through that? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I guess that was, I mean, when we look back now and uh, we see that as uh, we were kind of growing up and becoming uh, adults and, um, and that meant there were some things that took our attention away, you know, um, girlfriends, uh, jobs, uh, you know, moving out uh, of the house. Um, and so it was hard to maintain that um, focus on uh, on wanting to be a filmmaker. Uh, at, but um, in hindsight, it was really valuable because uh, we were just living life uh, and, and had never really forgotten about it. We always knew we were going to get back to it. It's just that we just spent a, maybe a lot less time than we had done uh, when we were in like uh, college uh, and, and moving into to university and and so yeah that was like for a number of years in our 20s and it was around about you know 26 27 that um with change in technology really um so um you know digital cameras were uh, becoming becoming a lot better um and uh video online uh, was becoming more of a thing and we saw an opportunity, uh, like Marlon said, to, to kind of go back to just hands on doing it ourselves uh, and, and just getting stuff out there. And um, so, yeah, so it, we, we kind of see that as um, our uh, learning to be an adult years. <laughs> and then we poured a lot of those experiences into uh, the, the work we were doing once we did kind of catch up with it again. And so, Marlon, once you guys came back together, as it were, how did, was, was run an idea at that stage? Run was Run was an idea. It went, it went through a, a few slightly different names, but the the idea was always because of what Dan was saying, the advent of you know smart cameras, and and it was around the time where people had just started watching content on their phones. Um, there was the the thought that maybe you could do you know really bite sized series of 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 Run based on a character. So you would do kind of like each series would last thirty minutes split into seven minute chunks um easy you could easily download it onto your phone and watch it on your phone and, and stuff like that and um yeah so we we decided we had already kind of come up with a series of of, of characters that we were going to inhabit this world in much the same way that it was on channel four but we were going to do them in, in much smaller chunks and we decided to to focus kind of on on one of those stories um and write the script for that story and I was uh, in contact with a producer uh, called Jamie De Cruz, who he was mainly making documentaries at the time, but he had a really big interest in getting into drama. Um, and I'd shown him loads of stuff along the years that he wasn't really you know, into or he felt needed a lot of work. Um, but it felt like we had plowed so much into this script and this idea that it was, very, it was already really developed quite a bit. Um, and he really loved it and wanted to, you know, develop it further with us. Um, and, and, you know, just as a lesson to whoever's listening, sometimes development can take a long time. You know, when you're, when you're working on an idea with a producer or a broadcaster, development can take, take a while. And we were still very early and, and fresh in our, in our careers then. Um, and we were kind of impatient, which I think is a good thing for, you know, young filmmakers coming up. And we decided to plow our own money into 
making that that pilot you know rather than wait for movement to be made um on his end because he was very much into it it wasn't because he wasn't into it it was just a bit slower than we wanted we decided to make it so me uh, daniel jonathan and another guy called adam who produced the pilot yeah we put our money into it and we and we made it and that's kind of what got us uh, a lot more attention i think from from broadcasters and 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 got us further got us kind of in the door in a way you know because this is such an amazing story because I mean, tell me if, uh, if I'm, um, I'm wrong on any of this, Mar, but, you know, you guys didn't at that stage have a lot of contacts in the industry necessarily. So was the, no. at that early stage, this producer who you'd contacted was almost your window in because yeah. people will say, you know, how do I even make that first step? And, and I think I read that it was like a family friend who was. Uh, yeah, well, well I, he, he, Jamie's kind of like, he is a family friend and he's someone that because he was, you know, he was like, he was in a way like, me in a way he, he he had off his own back forged his own path in into the industry um and so i always looked up to him so me, showing him projects and stuff like that was always important to me like to get his kind of approval in, in a way um and he had like i said he had never really been into the stuff that i'd shown him before and always gave gave me helpful tip, tips about making it better and you know uh, notes in a way, you know, from when at early stage, um, and me, Jonathan, and Daniel had always been so kind of like singular in our in our voice. We were always we always felt that we, you know, the drive and our passion will, is what was going to make it. But I think that we needed kind of like a champion in a way, or someone to get us to get us into certain situations and in front of people to prove to them that we were capable of doing it, you know. And I, think, because I, think, I think that young people do, they hear people say phrases like, you know, yeah, so we wrote this script and then it started getting sent round production companies and people just go, hold on a second, let's just pause <laughs> that step. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at home, I've got a script on my laptop, yeah. uh, how am I getting people at Channel 4 to read that or BBC or whatever? So to backtrack and make it real, so you guys are there, you haven't got a lot of contacts, you've got this guy who's really championing the project, who's you've shown stuff for years to, and then you, and I love this about you, you just got, you got a bit impatient, you, it wasn't happening, mm. and so maybe Dan, you pick up, sorry, and when you say you went out and made it, I mean, what amount of money are we looking at, and how, what, how are you guys making a, a TV show, and it was about half an hour, I think, the, the pilot that you shot, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so, um, so the, the idea, because back then, uh, webisodes were, <laughs> were the thing, you know, little five to seven minute chunks um, that you could, you know, watch on, because um, yeah, uh, uh, video on phones was, was very new as well. So you could only watch like five or seven minutes. And so we, we thought, oh, uh, you could, in a way, you could do an entire series if there's just five minute episodes, kind of like quick out in a, in a strange way. Um, but that's what we were thinking about back then. And it, um, uh, back then, uh, we we put all our savings into it. Um, uh, myself, Marlon, uh, Jonathan Pearson, Adam Dolman, all, all of us um, put uh, the money in. It came to about fifteen grand to do that. Um, yeah, twenty-five, twenty-seven minute um, uh, pilot that, that 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 you mentioned there, and uh, we f mainly funded that yeah with you know a bit of savings we had, but but mainly. Uh, working you know, all of us had day jobs of some kind or another and so it was about um, <laughs> you know working you know during the day or, or you know whenever we were on weekends and then and, and everything we got from that trying to uh, funnel that back in uh, to uh, uh, basically so a lot of the time we were working the short um, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it helped because you know we weren't working most exciting jobs at the time well, I think that's the commitment, uh, isn't it? Uh, you know, you, you, so you're working day jobs and you're applying all of that money into this, the, your shop, the big shop. And I think yeah. that that's a real lesson. We're going to take a look, guys, actually. Uh, we've got a video um, which, is, which shows some of this sort of pilot being made and you talking about it. So let's just have a look at when you guys sort of put your money where your mouth was and decided to basically get out there and do it yourself, which is the thing that largely kind of leveraged uh, the show into, into production. So let's just take a look at a couple of minutes of that. Jamie. Marlon's always written scripts and always had like really interesting ideas and so he sort of sent me things and we've talked about them and then 
out of the blue, Marlon just sent me this kind of concept for run and said that he wanted to come in and talk to me. And they came in with this kind of very sort of crazy concept about short dramas made for the internet. And it kind of grew and grew and we ended up shooting a, a whole sort of half hour pilot. We self-financed it, so all four of us contributed, put our own money into it. We did all the locations ourselves. Dan and Marlon did all the script supervision, all the continuity. I mean, the catering was wives, girlfriends, mums, dads. And we just didn't have a huge number of, of pairs of hands to help us do it. So it was pretty full on. Hey, John, John. Who's that? It's Michael. Come here, man. Who? Michael, come here. I was lucky enough to be kind of part of the original concept of Run when they did the pilot a few years ago. It's really kind of guerrilla tactics because this is something that they put in, you know, invested in their souls. The end sequence was tough. I mean, it was uh, because it was, it's literally just running and gunning. For the person on the street, what they would have saw was like a couple of guys around the camera. Uh, uh, John, the director, probably barking orders at someone. In front of the camera, you would have seen two guys chasing each other. You know, we were running down the road with cameras, shooting in the train station when we weren't meant to. Do you know what I mean, having to negotiate with the guy that was working on the station at the time. I remember one incident when the guys ran on the train like it's just an intense chase, it's getting towards the end of the story and this couple looked up and they thought it was happening for real and they're like, oh, yeah, they're going to yeah. try and run to the other end of the carriage and when we had to cut, say, no, 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 sorry, no, we're just, we're just yeah, filming. And, uh, once we shot the, the kind of pilot with Adam and had like Jamie's input, uh, you know, he really helped push it to what it is now, which is... Uh, like a four-part channel for drama. So, um, so yeah, it's had a very, very unconventional uh, start. Amazing. Such an inspiring story. Uh, you got out there and you did it. So let's just jump. So you, you, you got out there, you got your mates together, you piled in all your money from your day jobs, you shot that, and then you did... The, how did you get Lenny James involved, who's the sort of the, the face that people will often recognise? How did that come about, Marlon? Well, uh, we had wanted to work with Lenny ever since because he, he had written a show I think it might have been in like 96 or 97 might have been 95 but he'd written a show on the BBC called Storm Damage which kind of was very inspirational for me and Daniel so we, we'd always wanted to work with him and uh, the character of of Richard we had we'd written it with him in mind it's kind of like we put all our bets on on, on one actor um, like literally from the first line of dialogue, the three of us, me, John and Daniel were kind of like, it has to be Lenny, it has to be Lenny. It's almost like every day it has to be Lenny. Um, and we'd, we'd, we were kind of like halfway through the script and we were like, we should probably, you know, they were talking about casting and how to best approach him. And we just decided to write him a letter, you know, and just be completely honest and tell him, you know, what, how inspirational Storm Damage was to us and how we had written this, for him you know and how it could it could only be him um and luckily enough he I mean he came back and said you know thanks for writing to me and if the script's good i'll i'll do it um and so it was no pressure on us uh, you know it had to be uh, <laughs> it had to be good but luckily we we sent it to him and you know we we've, we've managed to have an amazing relationship with lenny ever since then um but yeah, we, we you know, the, the, the lesson is just to, to be bold, I guess, you know, to, to go for it. If you really want someone, you know, they might, they might not get back to you. And luckily enough, this time we did, we did manage to make contact with him. But yeah, we laid it all out there on the, on the line for him. Well, and the, no, and the it's a really part of the story because, you know, let's be clear, you guys, right, did not know him at the time. This wasn't like you were right yeah. on. You, in fact, didn't have any connection with him in any way at the time. So you're yeah. writing a letter to someone who you've basically seen their work on television or in the cinema and gone, we love that actor. And you just had the boldness to write them directly a letter. And I mean, just simple things, you probably sent it to their agent, right? I mean, that's the address you would have found. You didn't send it to his home address. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the agent, yeah. We sent it to his agent. So you sent it to his yeah. agent. But I think the other key thing to write that story for younger listening is that, you know, it was who you chose and who you chose was super smart, I think, because 
you know, if you do that with, you know, Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt, you know, you don't get, mm. you don't get, but I'm not sure how many letters like that Lenny James received from people who were passionate about his particular work and could really mm. reference that. Do you feel, Daniel, that that was an important thing for him? Indeed, yeah, and you're, uh, and you're absolutely right. It, um, it, if anyone wants to think about doing something like this, it, it's really important to find, because first of all, that you genuinely do love their work. So, you know, I would say that was the, that was the base for us. We, we generally were interested in uh, what he had done and him acting in it. And we were just yeah, very fortunate that, um, I guess he was um, in a place back then where, yeah, he, he uh, maybe really would have got a letter like that. I think that's very different now because he's, um, he's, he's, uh, he's grown and, and uh, is a lot more uh, famous, if, if you like. And, and well known uh, but um, but yeah so I, I think the timing w was perfect and also that it was tailor-made for him uh, I think a lot of actors no matter what level they're at uh, would love love that you know it's not just something we've written and you could do it. it's like no it can only really be you and if yeah. you say no we have to rewrite it and uh, and, and go a different uh, direction so so yeah um, I, I would say you're absolutely right um, it's about picking the, the right people who, who you're into uh, and, and uh, seeing yeah if, if there's some kind of synergy there I mean, so Lenny signed up after you guys essentially <laughs> sent the letter and then he later wrote the script and then just give us a sense of you know because a lot of writers spend a lot of time writing but very few writers get to see their work on a channel 4 series or whatever what was it just talk us through Marlon maybe that little moment for a writer where you suddenly realise oh my god this is actually happening and then you were kind of you were watching it in the way that you dreamed about it because I think you said I mean how long had you been working on it? by the time of broadcast how long had run been a thing for you guys I think it had been about six years about six years so 2007 to 2013 I think yeah mm -hmm. that was it um and and seeing it seeing it filmed was you know like you said it was it was you know pretty amazing and I think I think what was brilliant about run and what kind of like what I've learned along the way is how, how collaborative you know it is to be a, to be a writer you know you you write something which is like a blueprint for what the show or the series is going to be and then all of these people come in and they kind of elevate it you know they bring it to uh, almost like a, a, another another level you know um, and that was that was beautiful to to see I think because I think when you're you're younger you can be quite precious as a writer and be and you know what you write on the page is is in stone and this is how it's going to be and i think what what run was, was as, a, as a learning curve was like all of these kind of like different facets of filmmaking can come in and just elevate what is what you've put on the page um yeah i think that was a great lesson um, and that was wonderful to see as well incredible and so let's briefly, because I want to get to some questions, guys. So do uh, get your questions in, do send them through, and uh, we will put them very shortly to the guys. Um, how did then Save Me come about off the back of Run? Uh, maybe, Daniel, can you just talk us through what was the process there? Because obviously Save Me had a really big you know, footprint on Sky, and that was great. But how did that come out of, or did it come out of Run? What was the process there? Yeah, no, it, it came directly um, out of that in that, so we were, we were successful in getting Lenny. Um, the show uh, did really well. Um, uh, Mara and I were, you know, managed to uh, win a, an RTS award for, um, uh, for best drama writing, and then a, a BAFTA for best breakthrough talent. And uh, and uh, he really enjoyed uh, being a part of that, and wanted us to. Um, write on a show that he was developing with uh, Sky uh, at the time because uh, he felt that it was um, in the same tone uh, as, as Run and, um, and, it had that, and had that same kind of authenticity. So, so yeah, so he, he, he said, you know, I've, I've you know, written a couple of the episodes and uh, I want you to, to write one with me and also help shape where the show goes and, and, how, and how it ends. Um, and yeah, it kind of snowballed from there. And, and, the, and the great thing was, is that um, it was, you know, it, it evolved from us, you know, writing him a letter to be uh, a part of our show. And now he, he took, you know, we, we went to dinner uh, and then he kind of laid out what he 
was looking for for his show. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was as a direct result. Uh, so I think the lesson there is that it's about people, right? Isn't it? It's about mm -hmm. nurturing relationships and that for young people who get in, we often talk at Young Film Academy about, you know, be good, be, be good people because good people like good people. And then it, yeah. that's how it works. And obviously Lenny has played a, a big part in your careers and the development of those and, and those relationships are gold to some degree. Is, is that how you see it, Mona? Yes, for sure. I think it's all about kind of relationships, particularly, at, you know, at a younger age as well, you know, where maybe you're at, at a place or an environment or in a college or a school where maybe there aren't people who are as passionate as you are. I think it's really important to, to try and find community and try and find people who you can have, uh, you know, long lasting relationships with who, uh, who have as much passion as, as, as you do. You know, um, I think community is really, really important. You know, even if it's even if it's going to you know an event or uh, you know, we, I was always quite bad at networking and going to those social things. But I, I realized their power because even if you know you're just meeting someone for the first time, that's a relationship could, that could last for years. You know, I know mm -hmm. oh I know this person who does this, or oh, I know this person who you know I met this person once at a, at a at a little party or something like that, or a little get together of other filmmakers. Um, Relationships are really important. Well, this is great, guys. So we're going to start opening out some questions. Uh, so guys, do send in your questions. And um, a reminder that if you'd like to ask the guys uh, your question yourself, please just write audio afterwards. And we will try and get through as many of the questions as we can. Um, obviously, there'll be quite a lot about process, I'm sure. So let's start off with this question from Octavia. Uh, Octavia is 16, and I think we're going to hear Octavia's question herself. So, Octavia, go ahead. We can hear you. Um, what software do you use for writing film and TV episodes? Let's uh, ask that to Daniel. Oh, hi, Octavia. Um, well, we use Final Draft, um, which is probably the most popular screenwriting software that's out there and it's used widely uh, over here in the UK and in the USA. However, there are others. Uh, so if for whatever reason uh, you can't use Final Draft because it can be quite pricey, um, you know, Fade-In is a very good one um, that is uh, a lot less um, money and, and can do pretty much the same things. That's great. And I think that there are, so, well, let's actually put this sort of part two of that question because we get a lot of this from students who want the practical thing about writing scripts. You know, they say, does it matter that scripts all look the same way? Does it matter that they're in the same font? Why is that important? Marlon, what would your take on that be? What's the importance of using software to, to formalize the, the format? I think it's, I think it's just a, a very, uh, I think it's just a very simple way of, you have to realize that various people lots of different people are going to be reading your stuff and i think it's just a very simple way of breaking down what your your, your story is this is the perfect way of formulating and giving breath to your scenes and and so on um i think sometimes it can take if if you have written stuff in a way that's kind of like there's a very big difference between writing a play like you know so a film is scenes it's basically like you know, you're putting together a puzzle um, and placing them all together. A play is very much just like, you know, it's like a, a, a load of prose and lots of speeches and, and stuff like that. I think it's really important to formulate, to, to put a format to your script, just so the person in their mind is kind of seeing how, how, the, how the scenes will come together. Um, especially if you're, you know, you're trying to attract you know, a director, or even if you're thinking of directing yourself, is, you know, that format is important for pacing. Um, and it's just a very simple way of doing it. Yeah, I'd agree. And I'd add to that, that actually, you know, a lot of our students ask, does it, you know, if their script arrives and it's in a Word document format and the font is in, you know, sort of Helvetica or whatever, and it's not in exactly that font, people do immediately it just feels amateur in some way um, and especially if you're looking to get agents things like that you know that those little markers of your competency uh, yeah. just can say a lot so I do think it's worth and, and it is worth adding there are some free uh, online screenwriting software yeah. that are available now um, 
And can I ask, how does it work between, how do you physically collaborate on a single script when you're not in this room together? Or, or do you write in the room together? Uh, um, Marlon. Um, we, it's kind of, you know, so we have that diamond shape that I was talking about before. If we are working on, it's, it kind of varies. If we're working on a series, we'll be together, we'll break what the series is going to be and that kind of like a shape from beginning to end um, and then one of us will go away and maybe write up like a treatment about you know and give that series more detail put some more meat on the bones we'll come back together he'll or I will edit that you know tell them ideas and, and then go away and rewrite um, if we're working on a feature script depending on how how tight the deadline is i mean we can we can sometimes be working in the same room but usually it'll follow the same kind of process we'll break the story together go as detailed as we can in that way and then go away one of us will go away and write the pages to a deadline to our own forced deadline and then we'll come back together and go over those pages and then the other person will take those pages away and and rewrite Gotcha. Um, Does one of you do the heavy lifting of actually doing the first draft? Because we all know the first draft is the, is the <laughs> hard work of, oh God, is well, like one of you the draft guy and the other one is the come in and polish guy? We, we alternate between those roles. Um, yeah, we, uh, I mean, I wish, I wish one of them uh, could, uh, could <laughs> do the first draft, but some, it will fall to me or fall to him. It, it, you know what? That is a lottery. It entirely depends on what's happening on the previous project as to who's yeah. going to uh, step in to the blank page on the next um so yeah <laughs> let's let's deal with whilst we're here actually daniel so can you just talk us through the blank page because like a lot of young people will they describe you know it's a, it's a daunting thing a blank page that little cursor winks at you there's nothing there you're inventing the entire world there's no there's no equivalent of a, at least with a camera actually you point you just turn your camera on you point it at a street and there's a street but yeah. when you've got a blank page, you've got to write the street. You've got to write the weather. You've got to write the light conditions. You've got to write what people are wearing, thinking, doing. You know, it can be really overwhelming. And how do you guys, over time and with experience, how have you come to deal with that first thing? Because once you've done your first 5, 10, 15 pages, you're into it, right? And, and yeah, it has, that's right. Yeah. How do you get over that inertia? What advice would you offer to young writers? Well, there's a, there's a cheap trick. One is that you, you've likely have written an outline before you've, uh, well, you should, uh, I should uh, add, uh, outline your story before you start the script. So you can kind of cut and paste that into the actual script document and start separating that into scenes as, you know, that's going to be outside, so you know, exterior, interior. And that's a good way of just getting some words on the screen so you can start picking it apart. Because I think for a lot of people, um, rewriting or, or at least rearranging and polishing uh, or changing something that is already there is a lot easier than you know starting to write you know interior you know uh, house there mm -hmm. uh, and, and moving on from there so that's a kind of uh, a good way of tricking yourself and then another way is maybe you've uh, a lot of the time this can happen i you know we we know, I know how that scene's going to go. I kind of know the, the bits of dialogue that are going to be in that scene. And I'm going to do that, even though it's not the first one. And I'm, or I don't know where it's going to be. But it's, again, words on paper. And then I can build up from there or down from there. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, totally. So the blank page, get through it. Okay, great. So this next question, uh, we've got an anonymous question here. Uh, this one, let's give it to Marlon. Um, are there lots of writers who like who write together and do directors and producers like working with writing teams rather than individuals? Um, I think it can, I think it can vary. I, th I think um, in our experience, there aren't, there, there haven't been that many duos, you know, there aren't that many people who have written together. I think that, I'm not sure if I can, if I'm misremembering, but in our experience, most of the writers that we have met uh, have been solo writers. I think a lot of that is to do with over in, in this country. I mean, any when we were first starting, a lot of the screenwriters um, start off in theatre. So you know, theatre is very much a kind of like a lot of the time is is, a, is someone writing by themselves and solo, and they transition into into television. Um, but you know, I I think that 
directors and producers, I've, I think that they like to work with writers as early as possible. You know, I'm not sure whether, it's a, whether it matters, whether you're in a duo or whether you're by yourself. Um, I just think that it's, it's beneficial as well for a writer to work with a director as soon as possible, I think, to get that, put, that, get that writer in there as soon as possible. And uh, the writer is basically going to, you know, make everything that you put on the page. So it's good for them to have eyes on it and be working out with you the scenes that make sense, that are necessary, that are important to the story, you know, that have worth. Um, and I think a director is very good at showing you stuff that will be cut along the line. You know, there'll, there'll be stuff that you lose from your script um, eventually. Um, and that having a director on board as early as possible, you know, streamlines and makes your script a lot better. Um, so I think it's... Yeah, I mean, maybe we touch on the partnership angle there because, you know, people, we've talked a lot with our speakers about lifestyle and, you know, what it is to genuinely work in these industries. And I think, you know, people will know that often one of the allegations or the things that people will think a, screen, a screenwriter's life isn't fun is they'll go, it's very lonely. Uh, it can get quite isolating, you know, stuff like that. So maybe Daniel has the, has the sense of partnership and, and working together. Has that been a way through that? Has that, has that meant there's a lot less of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what a duo is great for. You can lean on each other because yeah, writing is a very solo uh, and solitary uh, profession. Uh, but even if you don't um, have a, a writing partner to, to, to lean on, uh, we feel it's important to uh, try and um, get in contact with other like-minded people, um, you know, people who, uh, you know, don't just like film, uh, but really want to uh, have a career in it, want to dedicate their, their life to it. Uh, and so that can help as well, like um, to either be sound in board or just to kind of meet up and, you know, sometimes you don't always have to talk about your work. You could just meet up and go and see a movie or something like that. It's, it's being around like-minded people who have the same passion. Uh, we would say that's imperative. Um, it, it, you know, no man or woman is an island at all. Uh, you need uh, friends, uh, uh, effectively, yeah. to help see you through. And it's what we've talked about a lot of young film academy and young people who come on our courses or summer camp or anything, they often just say, you know, this is their opportunity to meet like-minded, creative young people. And they, we often are amazed we'll get a, an email from a student who's met four other students on, the, on our camp or course, and then they've gone off and made their own film and they send the film to us. And it's, that's just so much part of the process, meeting other like minds. Okay, so we've got, uh, this is from um, Hannah, who's 15, and she asks, uh, let's give this to Marlon, have you ever had a specific piece of dialogue that you felt defined a character? Have you ever written it without knowing exactly where in the script it would go? Um, I think that those kind of things, I think that they, they, they happen in the, in the process, I think. I think that uh, one of the good things that you know I've learned along the way is that sometimes you, the best way to you know explain the motivations of a character are through action. Um, I think sometimes by trying to find a phrase or a, or a word or a sentence to to define a character, um, you you kind of box yourself in, you know, because. You, you end up trying too hard to maybe underline something or maybe do something that's a bit on the nose. Um, it always feels like action is the first thing to go, you know, action accentuates character. Um, and then your dialogue and that line that, you know, you think, okay, that's the golden line. It usually comes organically from there. Um, I think as a, as a writer, you always know it's like, okay, that's the line. Um, and it, and it almost creeps up on you. I think those are the, those are, those are, so, so they can happen, but usually it's not when you're like specifically looking for it. You know? yeah. uh, this is from Louis, who is 16, uh, joining us from Stockholm. And Louis says, and Daniel, let's give this to you. Are you pressured to get into all the politics going on? And are you afraid of getting out of touch now you're a big deal? <laughs> Great question, Lewis. Uh, no, uh, no, no. I, th I think that um, we have always uh, been engaged uh, in our own way uh, uh, in the politics of the day. I, I think 
when we were doing run, it was very much a snapshot of uh, some of the people we had come across in our lives and who lived in our area. Uh, and uh, we weren't afraid to pull, we weren't pulling any punches in, in trying to depict that. And I think that's carried on uh, into, you know, the work we've done uh, with Lenny James on Save Me and uh, the uh, other sh uh, shows um, uh, that we're developing and films that we're developing as well. I think we we don't shy away from that. Uh, and um, and and this, the second part uh, of that, um, I mean, <laughs> We wouldn't call ourselves a big deal, but, but thank you very much, Lou. Um, uh, <laughs> we, we, yeah, it, we, it, there is, you, you can't like, so the life we lead now is very, very different to the life we led back when we were just starting out. So uh, there can be a danger of, uh, of, of feeling out of touch or, 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 or missing, you know, the, the kind of zeitgeist or, or having your finger on the pulse. So we try our hardest to, to stay up to date and, uh, and, not all like so this is maybe contrast to what i was saying before it is obviously important to move in in circles and in communities with like-minded people similarly it's also good to always have uh, uh, you know a hand in people outside of that because the real world is what feeds story even if you're going to write like lord of the rings style fantasy or a sci-fi epic set thousand years in the future it, you're always talking about today in some way or, or who you are, who, pe who people are in some way. And so you always have to be in touch with that. So um, a great question. But, um, and yeah, we're, we're, always, we're always trying to keep on top of that. I actually, I remember a bit of advice that I heard years back when, when I was on a young writers program and someone asked uh, Simon Stevens, who was running it, who's gone on as a playwright, he's a brilliant playwright. And uh, they, they asked, what, what, I can, what can I do this summer to best this, that for my writing? And he went, live. Just live. <laughs> so uh, really live because you know writing is about life and about living and if you haven't lived and you haven't had experiences you know you there's nothing to write about so so go and live first okay this uh, next question um this is from let's give this to marlon uh, this is from alex who's 14 and he says do you have an agent with part what is question one and then question two which we'll give to daniel the part of that is how many of the original pilot team have stayed together so let's just talk about the agent thing first, Marlon. Can you say, obviously, do you have an agent? And maybe you can talk about how that works. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, yes, we do have an, an agent. Um, and your agent is, is a very important, you know, piece of the puzzle in your, in your career because your agent is basically out there, you know, representing you and trying to get you, you know, your, you and your work under the noses of, you know, filmmakers and production companies and, and so on. Um, my advice to you in, 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 in your career, you know, in, and when you're, when you choose to start looking for an agent is to kind of, is to do your, is to do a lot of, is to do research um, and to look to be with, you know, an agent who maybe, you know, represents or is associated with writers and directors who make stuff that you, that you like and that you admire, you know, who, who, who make stuff and, and create stuff that is, you know, similar to your tastes and your and your tones um it's really important that your agent understands who you are and as a person and as an as an artist so that they're you know not putting you into rooms where you feel like you you, you know this this doesn't really suit me and what i stand for and what i'm into um so it, you know do your research and uh you know make sure that you and that person get along and that they understand you and where you're coming from in your in your work cool and yeah. how um and how many of the pilot team have stayed together daniel well yeah um uh, well it's probably important to to note that um we are friends first so um so yeah we're still, you know, <laughs> still together in fact you know jonathan pearson who we co-created with um, uh, and along with Marlon, were best men at my wedding, um, uh, you know, five years ago. So, so yeah, we're, we're all still friends, uh, and we're developing uh, another project with uh, Jonathan at the moment. Uh, and uh, and we're still friends with Adam Dolman as well, uh, who who was the producer. So, so yeah, we're still together. So this next question sort of comes off the back of that, uh, Marlon, which is how do you settle creative differences between yourselves? I suppose as part of either of you as a juror or in the wider community how does that work um i think between the between me and daniel um you have to you know if you're passionate about an idea you have to 
defend it and you have to back it. Um, but I think if you're in a duo, um, y- your ego kind of has to go out of the window. And in, the honest answer is that the best idea will always come out in the wash anyway. You know, it, you know as part of the process of developing a script, you realise what, what the, the best idea is. And um, I think that we are very good, although we do, you know, we're in a partnership in a duo and there are ups and downs, you know, we do, I think, always go with what's the best idea and whether that comes from me or him, it's always about the story first rather than, you know, who came up with it. And to be honest, by the time we were at the end of the process, um, I, I don't really remember who came up with, with what. Um, and that's so interesting because we have young people who come on and, you know, and they work in a group and they, they, they come up with a story and often they find that thing of their idea isn't necessarily taken to begin with by the group. Yeah. And it can be very easy for them to lose, lose focus and think, oh, well, it's not my thing and all this. And then actually they learn during the process that they can add value at any time in the creative yeah. chain. And then suddenly yeah. they do feel ownership of that group idea. So I think, yeah, that's a super important thing. And, and then there's the last bit of the last question here before we finish up the questions. Daniel, is how do you, I suppose, people thinking about this across the world right now, but um, you guys obviously work at home uh, during lockdown or not. So how do you stay motivated working at home? <laughs> the bills you gotta pay the- no, I'm <laughs> uh, no, uh, no seriously uh, uh, um, uh, the, the mo- yeah so staying at home yeah it, it, I think what motivates is uh, knowing that uh, in this particular to be specific with the, with the lockdown the busier you could keep your mind the faster the time will go uh, if you are not busy yourself in whatever you may want to do, whether that be writing or whatever, it's going to be excruciating. Time moves faster the, the more busy you are. So, uh, so that's in relation to you know the actual lockdown itself. And in in terms of just like you know in, in general, like just motiv- motivating yourself to write. Uh, one thing that really helps uh, can really kickstart a, a bit of uh, or reignite passion, should I say, is watching uh, something that you really love, uh, seeing someone else's work that you've really been inspired by, uh, re-watching it or watching something new that they've done. Uh, and then after that, you're like, yeah, I, 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 I could do that, I could do that. Like, yeah, I, I really want it. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm, I feel that fire again. I want to do what they did. Or I, uh, you know, I, I feel that I can achieve even a you know, modicum of the same kind of success that, that they did. And, and that's another kind of general way of kind of getting back into writing mode. Yeah. And yes, bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So guys, just in these last couple of minutes of the session, let's, um, you know, there's people out there. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your questions there. Um, and there will be people watching this who hopefully go, you know, I would, maybe they are 15 to 20, somewhere in that age range, and they're listening and they're thinking, I would love to be Marlon Daniel in my career. I would love to be writing the exciting, great shows that you guys are and making those but I just don't know what I should be doing or focusing on right now that's going to give me the most opportunities a bit later down the line to maybe jump on or have a chance or shot at what you guys have done and, and what you've built. So maybe if we could just start with Marlon, come back to you, Daniel, just to finish off sort of anything practically or psychologically or any bit of advice you might offer to aspiring young screenwriters in yeah. this. Situation. I think that, I think, um, that you should be on the lookout always, I think, for schemes, you know, young writing schemes and things where you, where you get the opportunity to share your writing. Um, I think that's, that's really important. I think there were loads of things out there when I was a, a, a teenager that I just weren't, wasn't aware of. Um, I think because it was a different time and you, you know, you didn't have, you know, it, jumping on Google and stuff like that just wasn't available to me. Um, I think that there's lots of schemes out there, lots of things out there where you're able to share your writing and meet other people who write as well. And that will be really important for you, you know, in meeting your community. And also just, I mean, this is a cliched one, but whenever you meet anyone and you say, I'm a writer, the first thing that they are going to say to you is, oh, what have you written? Or can I read something you've written? So make sure you have something, you know, to share. Um, because that's the first thing that anyone that's going to say is going to say to you when you tell them you're a writer. 
what have you written? You know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. We said that about filmmakers as well. It's like, you're a filmmaker if you make films. It's that simple. So oh, yeah. go out and make a film because then you're a filmmaker. Yeah. Okay, same with a screenwriter, you know, you've done it. And Daniel, what would you say? Yeah, just to, to, to second that, yeah, try and try, like technology is so great now, uh, try and write something and get someone to film it or film it yourself, no matter how, uh, you know, cheap it's going to be, just get out there, do it. Um, older, who's like, um, you know, uh, approaching 18 or over 18, you can also um, write spec scripts of TV shows that you really love and send them into the BBC writer's room, um, like they accept, uh, yeah, and that's just to follow on from what Marlon said in terms of schemes and stuff like that. They accept uh, unsolicited material um, from 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 adults uh, or, or people over eighteen, um, and in particular, it, they like specs of shows because that can show that that you can write in someone's voice, but you can also add some of your own in there. That you can balance that out, and then that's really beneficial because you can get an agent that way, and, and it shows that they, you know, you, you could be hired basically, for want of a better expression, you could get a job. We can give this person a job, look, they can write a Doctor Who episode, isn't that great? That's what, you can also do original work as well, that's also important, but just as a more practical, hands-on, uh, showing people that you are hireable uh, uh, and desirable uh, is, is, you know, uh, one, of, one of the ways. That was a great bit of advice. We just had a glitch, January, when you were saying, that's the opening sentence there. So what was it exactly that you replied to the BBC, what was it then? So the uh, BBC Writers' Room. BBC Writers' Room, guys. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the BBC do have a scheme where you can send in a, your own version of a, of a series that's ongoing and you can write your own episode of whatever the show is that you love. And, and that can lead to other things involving potentially getting an agent that can help and be, and be useful. So absolutely. And, and Marlon, I totally agree on on that point about getting out there and discovering the schemes that are available. Um, we know, so Young Film Academy, we have all on our, all our social media channels uh, and we highly recommend that all our students get on there and join them if you have on our Instagrams and Twitters and whatever, because what we do is we collate all the information when we hear about these schemes or these grants or these whatevers and we push them out on those channels. So there is a way to centralize, but obviously we're not the only one, there will be others, but do spend the time guys, get out there, follow those sort of the, the aggregated places that bring these opportunities together because there are a lot, you know, you're lucky you're young uh, and there's a lot of stuff being thrown at young people. So um, do get on those. So guys, well, thank you very much indeed, uh, both Marlon and Daniel. Thank you so much guys for sharing your experience um, and your terrors of the blank page and some of your tips. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you very Thanks much. For having us. We wish you uh, very well with your upcoming projects, which sounds super exciting. And uh, we will follow on and look forward to, uh, to seeing some of those. So guys, uh, just before we finish, um, I know that funds that have been raised from this uh, Q&A, just like all of our Make Meet Maker series, uh, funds will be donated to the NHS COVID-19 Charity Appeal. So thank you very much, Marlon and Daniel, for participating and helping and making that possible. Um, this this is the final session in the current series of Meet the Makers. Uh, we are looking at the format for the next one. So obviously do follow on on either the social media channels or, or the Young Film Academy website with details of how and when that next series will be happening. Um, so this summer, for those of you who are looking at what you could do, so you've listened to Daniel's advice and you think, right, I've got to get out there and actually make something, which I'm absolutely right, and you want to learn the skills. Um, do check out a couple of things. We have a masterclass series of 14 to 17 that start, that happens uh, pretty much every Saturday or most Saturdays. Um, we've got green screen this weekend, soundtrack the following weekend, screenwriting, directing, uh, practical masterclasses, three hours. So do get involved in those. And then we have a virtual summer camp. So you can do it from home, but you will be working in a team uh, making a movie with uh, actors who are going to also join the camp virtually and make these incredible new format films that we're all living with in lockdown, which is going to be uh, super creative and really fun. So do check out virtual summer camp. That's for ages 12 to 13, 14 to 17 on the website and also the four day film schools, which uh, will be running in a couple of weeks time, also remote. So you can join them from home and not have to do any travel. So thank you again, uh, Marlon and Daniel, for joining us, guys. Um, good luck getting back to work and on set. We hope it all goes very well. <laughs> thank we you. hope to see you uh, all again in the next series of Meet the Makers. And thank you very much for joining us throughout this series. So until then, stay safe and goodbye.
Man. You too. Thank bye you bye. very much. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.